Uh, today shouldn't be too long. That way you guys have some time to work on your projects. Um, <clears throat> and I say too long and it might still be most of the class, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about how do you calculate password strength. And there's a lot of different ways to actually calculate it. Um, all of them come down to what they refer to as, as um, entropy. <clears throat> and so uh, how you wind up, you know, using entropy and what you decide to be entropy um, becomes a big question. We're going to look at simply the Total, the simplest method, which is the total number of possible uh, combinations that you have. So, <clears throat> based upon you know a couple of um, factors, what's the what's the maximum number of possible combinations you could have? We are not going to be looking at things like. Um, uh, Dictionary attacks, which is, is your password found in the dictionary? Uh, is your password a uh, part of your name? So, you know, if your name was John Smith and your password was John Smith 123, that has obviously a very low um, uh, password strength, even though there's a lot of possible combinations for the length of it and the fact you have letters and numbers and all type of stuff. Um, it, because those are, are directly tied to your name, it's pretty easy to guess. And so we're not going to look at, at that. We're not looking, like I said, at dictionary attacks um, or sequential letter attacks, which is, uh, is commonly shows up in the top 10 uh, password combinations is uh, QWERTY, uh, which you might go, what's QWERTY? Well, if you look at the top left of your keyboard, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY, um, that is a very common password for people to pick. And uh, you know, so that's no good. Uh, we're not going to look at stuff like that or people that type in AAA, BBB, CCC. It's a legal password, but it's not smart because you're using repeating letters and stuff like that. So we're not looking at stuff like that. We are looking solely at a um, uh, so solely at, at a how long is your password? How many thing? How many possible combinations of letters could there be for characters? And how do we pick that up? Okay, so that, that's kind of what we're going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new new um, project. We'll do a uh, we're going to pick a WPF app, which if you kind of scroll down here under C sharp, uh, WFP app is a Windows Presentation Foundation client application. Um, there's also a Windows Form app that we could pick if you are interested. Uh, it uses Windows Form. Um, very similar, but we're, I'm just going to do the WPF. Uh, I believe that's the, the quote unquote newer technology. One of the things you got to realize is that Microsoft comes out with a new way to do apps periodically. It's a little on the frustrating side. You'll get used to it. Um, <clears throat> so I need to pick a project name. Password um, combination checker. And I'll say create. And when I create this, it's going to come up and give me uh, some information. This should look pretty familiar. If you look at this, this is a um, XML description of this window here. You notice that we have a window. Uh, over here on my bottom right hand side are properties for my window. And this is a context sensitive window, which means that as I click on different things, it's going to change. Um, you'll notice I have like title main window here. I can type it in and say uh, password checker. And I typed it in here in my property window. 
up on my window up here. Notice that password checker is listed here. And you can now see it. And if I come into my XML, there is a title attribute password checker. Okay. Uh, my height and width can all be set in here. And there's lots of different things that can be set. And you can dynamically control that. We're not going to look at that. We're going to keep it simple. Okay, I need to open up what's called the toolbox. <clears throat> and the toolbox is going to have where I'm going to have my visual components I can drag onto this form. So I can come over here to toolbox. And every time I could click and drag, it would uh, hide it. So what I'm going to do is I want to pin this toolbox open while I'm going to be working on it. So in the top of my toolbox bar here, on my far right-hand side, right before my X, I have a little pin. I click on it and notice that it went from a pin pointing kind of to my left-hand side to pointing down. That means it's pinned and it's going to stay here. I have some common WPF controls uh, that give me all of my information. I also have all WFP controls. So if there's other things I needed, for example, if I want to add a calendar or if I want to add uh, a grid or something like that, um, grid is up here, but calendar is not. So my we're going to just look at the common ones because that's all we're going to need to pick. Um, <clears throat> but it just kind of gives you an idea. I'm going to pick a label first. Just going to click over here and drag it. And then I can come in here and uh, notice down here, I can change my content to say, enter a sample password. And it changes it here. So wherever I change it, I can change it over my properties and my XML section. It all updates everywhere. It kind of depends on what you like best. Um, I'm also going to drag label again and say possible combinations. So we're going to take the password that's entered and we're going to calculate a possible combination. Okay, so I can, if you notice here, as I click and move things, I get some little highlights that let me know if things are aligned left and right, top and bottom, different things like that. So, all right, if I want to put a text box, I have a text box option. And click, I'm going to drag it and line this guy up here like that. And I'm going to come over here, and in text box, I'm going to make that blank by default. And I'm going to give, uh, where is it? Is that a brush? No. Uh oh, I'm trying to remember where, I, where it goes. I need to give this a name. Uh oh, I'm trying to remember where I got this a name. Ah. Under automation, there is a name, and I'm going to call this TXT password. Okay. One more text box. Make sure you pick text box, not text block. I'm going to give it a little extra size under automation, under name. It's going to get txt combinations. And under text, I'm going to leave that blank. OK. So, so far, this is all pretty straightforward. Uh, you might ask, why am I calling these TXT combinations and this TXT password? 
It's just to make it a little bit simpler, TXT lets me know I'm dealing with a text box. Uh, it's called Hungarian notation, if you're curious. Uh, now, Hungarian notation, if I'm fully using it, I'll put like B in front of every variable that's a Boolean variable, and I in front of every variable that's an integer variable. I don't like to do that. I just do it with my text boxes. There's a lot of times your your prop your your fields on a on a form like this are going to have similar names, and so it just especially because I have to have a label that goes with a text box. So I just group them like that. Okay. I'm going to select my sample password, um, and I'm going to uh, double click on it. And when I double click on it, I'm taken to some code. You might say, well, where is this code? This code happens to be in main window .xaml, example cs, and this deals with the code that is part of this XAML, okay? So um, think of this like if you remember your, your C++ file, uh, when you had a class, you'd have like a .h file, then you have a .cpp file. The XAML is kind of like your .h, it defines all your, your window properties and fields and, and what text boxes and stuff is gonna be there. Your X dot, or xaml.cs file, that is your code behind the scenes that says, okay, in this case, for my text box, text change, what am I gonna do? Now, I need to double check something real quick because I could have sworn I changed that text box's name. Yeah. Hold on, I did not, I don't like that. Where is, okay. That's where we change. Okay, they, they changed some stuff on me. I'm still learning this new system. Okay, so I want to change the name up here, not the automation. I want to change it up here. So I changed that to password. I'm changing this to txt combinations. So now I'm going to come here to txt password. Word that's there. Sorry, hold on, I'm just double checking some stuff. Okay. Why is that? I'm still not liking that. Okay. Why is that still being text? <sighs> I'm used to using a different method and it gives me my, my name here. Yeah, it's not like an idea. Either. Okay. Let's double try this. Okay, so I'm gonna go this dot, sorry, my backup. I'm gonna get a string, that's gonna be my password, and it's gonna equal this dot txt password dot text. Okay, so this is, since this is part of this window for my main window, XML, that's what this is. This is the field, txt password, that goes to this window. And then this is the text property for uh, what comes out of password, what comes out of password. 
if I look up here, I have a whole bunch of using statements. I'm not going to use all these, but the one I'm going to use that's real important is the system.link. Because system.link allows me to uh, perform SQL-ish like statements. Um, and I say SQL-ish like because it's got some SQL-like statements to it. And it's got some stuff that's not like SQL at all. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. But a big part of what I need to do is I need to determine how many possible letter combinations are there, or character combinations could there be. So if I have like a, a numeric value, zero through nine, that gives me 10 possible combinations that I need to know about. So I'm going to say int combinations, and we're going to start at zero. And right now it's not liking it because it's a sign, but it's never used. That's okay. We'll use it in just a second. So I'm going to say if password dot any, and then I'm going to say uh, char dot is digit. Okay. So this is going to return a Boolean variable, in which case I'm going to say combinations plus equals 10. Okay. Then I'll say if password dot any <coughs> character dot and we'll do is lower. So is lower is going to be obviously special because I'm only looking at lowercase letters. And I want to do this separate from my uppercase because I have 26 lowercase, I have 26 uppercase. So I'm looking for my total combinations. If I said is a letter, then I'm looking at 52, but I might only have all lowercase. So this is letting me know, hey, is this upper, is this lower? So this is going to be combinations plus equals 26. Then I can literally come in here and duplicate this and say is upper. Okay. And then finally I can say if password dot password helps if I spell it right. Any char dot is punctuation. Now, in reality, I don't like is punctuation in this case because it gives a lot of punctuation symbols and maybe I'm gonna allow them, maybe I'm not. So a lot of times passwords, you'll find, oh, you can use an exclamation point, but we don't want you to use a star and different things like that. So um, gotta be a little bit careful of that. All right, so this is giving my total number of combinations um, of, of possible letters I could pick. My overall combination um, is, so this gives me for any one character, let's say I had numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and punctuation. I have 72, I have 92 possible combinations approximately. Approximately, this is just an approximation that that one character could be. So if I want total combinations, then I say something like, total combinations equals, and it's the length of my password. Uh, sorry, it's math.power. And it's gonna be the length of my password. So password.length, raise the power, that's what math.pow does, raise the power of my combinations. It wants that as a double, sorry. Okay, so that gives me my, my total possible combinations. So combinations is for any one character, and then we raise that to a power every time um, we go to a new character uh, down the line. Okay, at this point, I'm then going to say I need to write something to my text box. So this dot text combinations 
dot text equals there are a total of plus total combinations plus for this password. If I run this now, I'll enter a password, Q W E R T Y. So from a straight perspective, QWERTY looks like it's pretty strong because it's got a lot of possible combinations, but it's not really strong because it's falls under that dictionary attack. It's something that's a known entity. Okay. If I type in this, I still get quite a bit. If I type in new letters like this, you can see where it's coming in, adding new possibilities. Okay, you might say, well, what, what is this one? Well, anything raised to the power gives you one. And you can kind of see what's going on here. If I close this real quick. Okay, so this is your, your basic how it's working. This is just using plus equals math to a power and trying to trying to calculate what this says. Um, now you can go in and, and give some additional information. Uh, so for example, So if I want to put in how many letters are in it, just verify is, boy, that didn't quite seem right, you know. I might go, okay. Couldn't quite see it, so I can just kind of scroll inside this text box. You see how it's constantly updating. As soon as I add a, a letter in here, because that gives me 26 numbers that has a lot of possible combinations. Um, in reality, the more characters you have, it is actually better for your combination strength than adding complications to it, especially once you get it past about six to eight characters, you start becoming really challenging. So one of the things you look at is you say, well, how quickly could it take to have a password that's crackable by you know just brute force testing and that's what this is looking at <coughs> excuse me so you might look and say okay based upon what i see um i i see that there is a possible um you know two million combinations how big is that well, I could then go in and say, well, you know, if I were to estimate a thousand attempts per second, how long would it take to, to figure that out? So if I come down in here, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it all at one time. <clears throat> Uh, so a thousand combinations per second divided by 60 combinations or 60 seconds per minute divided by 60 minutes in an hour 
divided by 24 days. And the downside with this is, of course, and, and don't forget that as computers get faster, maybe they can do 1,000 this week. <clears throat> Next month, maybe they can do 1,200. Next year, maybe they're doing 1,800. You know, in two years or three years, they're, they're doing two or 3,000. So this number here, this first number, is going to change a lot. So if I pick and said, I'm not going to try a dictionary attack. I'm just going to do brute force on QWERTY. Should tell you how much. Something is wrong with this date number system. This calculation is not right. I know that. Um, I'm not doing multiplication in here, am I accidentally? That should give me four raised to twenty six. Oh, maybe that is right. Um, <clears throat> this kind of seems off. Okay, so this this kind of gives you an idea of how long would it take to, um, you know, crack a, a a system and whatnot, make it how how fast would it be? That's really all there is to it. Now, like I said, there's other ways of, of calculating what they call the entropy, and that's for using, you know, if you're going to pick other types of things and combinations um, and how long they figure it's going to take to break something. Uh, but that's a whole different thing. Other things you can do, <clears throat> just as an example, is um, you might have a checkbox over here. Let's see. Okay. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Stop that. We'll call it CK lower. And under content will be um, lowercase letters. <clears throat> and then we'll come over here and do another checkbox. So we'll just do upper and lowercase letters real quick, just as an example. <clears throat> Here I check to see if my character is lowercase. So any is using that link that says it looks for any characters inside a password. If that character is lowercase value, we're going to add our combinations. And then we'll do something like this.ck, this is lower dot checked equals true. Uh, that's an event, that's not the one. Um, Hold on. Uh, 
I don't think it's going to like that, though. Nope. Oh, what is the one for checked on this one? It used to be. It is checked. Is checked should determine if it um, is a, a Boolean value to see if it is checked or not. Checked is the property, to, is the event. So like when we typed, the text changed. The text change was the event that occurred. Um, in the Windows forms, it was checked. Don't ask me why they changed that. <sighs> This WPF is driving me nuts. Well, there's a solution for this. <laughs> when in doubt, C sharp WPF. Um, checkbox, oh, that's weird. That's so bizarre. That should not be. Okay. Okay, let's try this. There are build errors. Okay, so it should be, if I type in one, two, three, notice my check boxes are not checked, but if I type in A, lowercase, it stays there. B, C, we're good. It's still doing lowercase, but not the uppercase. D, E, F, when I type in uppercase letters, it does the uppercase. So if you've ever seen like how you were like typing into a password and it says you must use uppercase and lowercase at numbers and you know three emojis and you know all that type of stuff this is one of the ways that they're doing it what they're checking for is <clears throat> in places like this char is lower okay was it a lowercase character yes it was then i'm going to set a checkbox and they change it to is checked instead of checked which is bizarre, and that should not be. But that's how they did it. Um, is checked equal to true? <clears throat> um, and so this is in the CK lower for checkbox for lower is different than CK upper. If I wanted to make sure that you couldn't change this value yourself, there's often a like read only type of. Um, process that you can put on here and you know it might be something like in um, is is enabled and that kind of hides it so you can't make it enabled um, sometimes it doesn't like that because sometimes it will um, um, if it's not enabled, it won't let it um, let you change that value. <clears throat> but in this case, if you type in type in the lowercase, it says no. We can still work with that. So we can say here's our lowercase values. Um, 
and that way I can't click on this. You know, I can click on uppercase, but I can't click it and set it. So it's a, uh, it's making it by saying it's, it's not enabled. It's making it read only, essentially. Um, so that's just kind of a real quick way if you can also check on, on something like that. Okay. Any questions on those? Can't believe they did that with the checkbox. That drives me nuts. Okay. So you could add in a couple extra, one for like, numbers, one for special characters, uh, which is like your punctuation. Um, your punctuation, if you check on what the punctuation is, it's all your punctuation. So it's pluses, minuses, anything that's like shift in a number, periods, angle brackets, there's a bunch of different combinations in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we break them out as best we can independently that way and, and separately that way it has a chance to best work itself when you are um wanting to get like a real refinement as to what does this include or not include um if you want to say something like you have to have like two uppercase and two lowercase or you have to have at least x number of letters you can check things like your password dot length because that has uh, specific length associated with it <clears throat> and different things like that. So it really kind of depends upon how do you want to uh, make that play out for lack of a better term. Um, and like I said, that's just a, a real simple, simple methodology. You could get a lot more complicated if you wanted to with um, just the way things are, are, you know, how you want to calculate things. Um, the whole process, like I said, is referred to as entropy, and you can do some research on that and, and figure it out. Um, and part of that's because computers are getting so much faster, that thousand per second is actually a couple years old. Um, so you're probably looking at four to six thousand per second nowadays with a modern computer. And if you really need to get into something, what you do is you can uh, rent server farms essentially and say, hey, well, I'm, I'm not going to use just one computer. I'm going to use 100 computers. Um, and there's legitimate and illegitimate ways of, of doing that to shorten that time period. Uh, a perfect example is, and this is from years and years ago, um, an article I read, and this was a, a computer security firm. Someone had left the company and they had a password protected zip file well they have been let go and they weren't going to give up the password they just conveniently forgot what the password was so that they couldn't you know open up the file that they really needed <clears throat> um and so this company went up hiring someone and and they went onto amazon and rented like a hundred computers and ran a uh decryption algorithm to try to see when would, would they be able to break the password. And they knew some stuff and they figured out, well, well, it's going to take, you know, about a week to do this. It's going to cost X number of dollars. And the company said, fine, it's worth it. We'll, we'll do that. Um, in other cases, and, and the Russian mafia is really known for this, is they'll go in and infect your computer with a, with a virus that takes over your computer and your computer becomes a bot and what they call a bot farm. And to keep you from noticing that there's a problem is they don't use all of your computer. They only wait till your computer's kind of idle. It's just sitting there. So you never notice it's there, but they're in the background running whatever application is sent to them. And the, uh, the Russian mob is known for this. They'll go in and, and say, hey, we can rent out 10,000 computers and they charge a certain amount of money per computer or thousands of computer hours or however it gets calculated out. And you can say, I need to try to crack this guy's password and you can have the, the, the Russian mob do it. And they put thousands of computers on the, on the job. Um, in some cases, I know there's at least one bot farm at one point that had like 50,000 computers in it. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what it's like. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different things that can be done. It's kind of interesting, um, kind of scary in some ways, if you think about it. Um, 
so the the stronger your password is, the better you have. Um, but you know, the the worst case thing is that passwords get broken and hacked just because of other types of breaches. Um, whether someone was able to get in and, and get access to a system, or someone, and this happened to I think it was Amazon, um, they accidentally in their uh, log files, which were not protected at all, they, when anyone was log, was doing anything in uh, on the Amazon site, it was tracking all this, and they wound up storing the unprotected passwords when people would go log in instead of encrypting that. Um, so it's a real problem that you can run into from time to time. Uh, I've actually built years ago, or not years ago, about a year ago, um, this um, website, uh, and it kind of tells you about some of the stuff, um, and you can kind of figure out what was going on and how long it would take to, to build it out. And I broke it down to years and days and stuff. So if you did QWERTY, um, QWERTY had 308 million possible combinations, uh, and it would take zero days to crack it. Uh, if you did QWERTY 1, 2, 3, it added a lot more possible combinations, but still only took 68 days. Uh, and that's for a single computer. If you said, hey, I'm going to throw a 1,000 computers at this, well, 68 divided by 1,000, you're cracked in a half hour, maybe less. Um, if, on the other hand, you said uh, something like, this is my favorite password, exclamation point, um, now you're taking... 2.8 to the 26th power years. And we had one at work that was, um, this is a long password, exclamation point. Um, 2.6 to the 22nd power years to hack that password. Uh, so even if you threw a thousand computers at it, because it was, you know, 16 or 18 characters long, um, even though it didn't contain a number. Uh, it contained an exclamation point, but didn't contain a number. Um, even if you throw 1,000 computers at it or 10,000 computers at it, uh, you're looking at such a long time. You're looking at years. What's the odds of you randomly coming across that? You're not. You would have to brute force it. You would have to get it mixed in there, uh, and that's a problem. If you were good at this one, you can do a source and, and look it up. Um, my special characters are not as big as all punctuation. Um, and I use um, uh, a regular expression to calculate that out, if memory serves correct. So there's lots of different ways that you can uh, kind of process this as you build through it. Um, Denise, did you see this or were you not in for my, my test teach when I came in to teach? I think I saw this, yeah. Okay. I can't remember if you were there for, for the test teacher, if you had class when... No, uh, I was there. I was there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway. Um, yeah, so that, that's where that is and stuff. So it just gives you a chance to kind of get an idea for how big and how, how complicated some of the stuff is. Okay. Uh, questions, comments, thoughts? Oh my goodness, I need to change my password right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say maybe it's giving like the wrong number of days. Maybe it didn't like the division. Maybe if we multiply all of them and divide by just one. Yeah, that, that, that might like. be. Let's see. Nope. Never mind. Yeah, there's something. Thousand seconds, sixty seconds, and a minute, sixty minutes and an hour, twenty four. And there's still something. There's something not right with the math in there. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, 
So, and it could just be that my my this thousand is just way off. Um, you know, if you did ten thousand, that should drop it some. But not enough. That I mean, I. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> um, you, you know, there, there's lots of things we could we can go in and check, um, but that's that's the basics of it. So that's how you you work some with your uh, WPF. Uh, files to create like text boxes and, and use your events to handle how it's going to process out and stuff. Um, and my Yeah, something's not right there too. So anyway, I don't like that, but I'm, I'm I'd have to figure it out later. And maybe I could just change the text, the field name in here. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do. So this is looking for a text change, just so you know what this does. This is for this text box up here. And this looks for a text change and says based upon text change, then I want to whenever it's changed, so whatever the value is different than what it was before, I want you to run this event handler. The event handler says, okay, here's the sender event. It's a generic object. Um, and here's the event arguments. Uh, we're not needing to know any of those things, but I could come down here if I want to and say, E dot and get different things like how is it routed, what was the source of it, um, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, e dot changes dot that's like a, a list so you know if there's more than one change and different things that can happen as far as that goes. Um, so this is just really, really simple, um, but lets us know how to handle an event handler. Event handler programming is I sit there and I do nothing and I just kind of wait until some event occurs and when an event occurs and it could be like a mouse click that's going to be different than um, if you type something and you change a value. Um, I could be a mouse over or a mouse hover. I've got lots of different possible events that I can kind of deal with. Um, so this just lets me know what it is. And then this text changes and it happens to be an event. And it lets me know, okay, what do I do when I see this event? And if I came over here, this gives me all my other options. So I could have, um, you know, context menu opening and closing, and I could have uh, data context changed. That's if it's like linked to some other data source. Um, drag and drop events, uh, anything that's got like that little lightning bolt, that's an event. Focusable has changed. So if it's focused or you're given focus, got focus, it's probably a lost focus in there. Um, all different types of stuff, you know, uh, is enabled change. So if it was enabled and isn't, you know, Maybe when I make it enabled, I check, okay, is enabled change? Oh, okay, are you enabled? Yes, you are. Okay, now that you're enabled, let me do a little tooltip window. I'm going to pop up. Now you can click in here, and this is now available to you. Um, all that type of stuff, uh, mouse capture change, keyboard focus change, all that you can see how many different uh, events are there. And I can do even key up and key down. Um, text change is just a simple obvious one to work with so that's why i did that one okay any other questions no all right um if we come back here i was going to make a comment that oh okay uh, one time when i've 
whenever I was in high school, my I would sit with my friend. She'd have her tablet. It'd be like she had like 50 characters for her password. She remembered it really quick. She could just type it all up. I'm like, That's the way you to do it. remember that? Yep. Oh, and we used to have at my work, your password, if you're a regular person, was like eight characters. But if you were a system admin, you had to be 16 characters. And you see them, they just start typing and typing and typing. They have like this whole long like sentence they would type in. This is my super long password. I hope I remember what it is. And then they go, <laughs> you see like pause like, did I remember to capitalize that one letter? I can't remember. And they hit enter and go, I hope it's going to work. I hope it's, oh, I forgot to capitalize it. <laughs> All right, enter in this whole thing again. And it was it was like you're 16 or 24 characters long. I can't remember how long. It was really, really long. Um, and the idea was that you're just not going to break it. And we had to change our passwords like every 45 days. They had to change their passwords like every 30 days. Um, and depending upon where you are, there's lots of different things that you can find in rules. Like um, you can't use the same password for more than, you know, the last 12 passwords. You can't change your password twice in the same day. Um because they don't want you to go, password one, okay, well, I can't reuse that password now, so password two, change it, password three, change it, password four, change it. You know, they don't want you to do that all in one day and get back to that one password. Um, you'll see passwords that, it always scares me if they say, uh, click here, we'll send you your password. Like, uh, no, that means that you're storing your password un unencrypted. You should always encrypt the passwords. Uh, you know, so there's lots of little things like that that you find overall. All right. Do you guys have a chance to look at this game of life at all? Uh, kind of switching gears. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I glance at it a little bit, like the rules, what we're supposed to do, but I don't think I got it really well. I was going to ask you about it. Okay. So what, what was your questions that you were going to have? So, like, how you want us to do, basically, like, are we going to put a file in and it's just going to read that file or it's just, like, a mm, random generator and it just does it for, like, 10 cells or something? So, I would I would focus on, I, I'm working on see if there's, there's a little tweak I can make to make it a little bit more interesting, um, but I would probably have, like, a, a 100 by 100 square, mm -hmm. um, which... Because if you do 100 by 100 square, you're going to look at something that is, um, you're obviously going to be using loops and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about it too much as far as that goes. Um, but you get a chance to uh, actually see what it is that you're working on. Um, so if you got that 100 by 100 square, then you can... Uh, run it in you want to be able to almost run it and update it periodically um but that that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge so you might you know you're definitely going to need to read in some external data so you know the external data would be like how many frames are you going to run and um how many um what's, what's the word i'm looking for how, how many frames are you going to run how maybe you know are, are there uh, like there's a whole set of rules in here mm -hmm. if you if you open this up um any living cell with fewer than two neighbors dies if by underpopulation so the idea being that um if i only got if I have less than two live neighbors, well, I need neighbors to survive because in a community, that's what happens. I can't do everything myself, so you do some stuff, I do some stuff, we barter, we trade, we whatever. Um, but would you be able to change that number so where you could survive if you only had one living neighbor, you're very self-sufficient, or maybe you give a percentage, you know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. But I would work first on trying to figure out how, what classes would I need to cap to have? So I need to have like a cell class. Um, 
I might need in my cell class, I know what cells are next to me. Um, so I need to know like my, if, if I'm thinking of myself as like a hundred by hundred grid, I can say, well, if I'm at 50, 50, I can look and I know that my neighbors are going to be 49, 49, 49, or 50, 49, 51, 49. And then I go down to the row I'm on and I'm like, um, 49.50 and 51.50 and then I go down it and so I can kind of you know make some assumptions as to where my neighbors are um, and find out you know so I, I've got to have that value I've got to have a uh, is living type of property um, you know and then I got to have a, a method to change that for lack of a better term uh, based upon these rules and, and whatnot so um, it's, a, it's an interesting little process. Yeah, I see. So like you can check the neighbors basically like same row, one left, like mm -hmm. plus one, minus one, and one row up, one row down in the same column. Yep. Yeah. But so like we just gonna randomly pick some of them to die and is the game going to go from there? Um, yeah, you probably want to start with just some random ones that are living and see how the game progresses from there. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm.